Hey guys, Matt Waxler here at Wheels Through Time. We're hanging out at the Teens Motorcycle Shop exhibit at Wheels Through Time. Got something new to show you, check it out. Now things are always changing here at Wheels Through Time. We're always looking for new and rare machines to add to the collection. Bikes with character and bikes with personality. Bikes with great stories. And what I want to show you today is this 1912 Harley Davidson Model X8A. This bike found us about a month ago uh, and it is so remarkably original. It's very rare that we have an opportunity uh, to add a machine like this to the collection here at the museum. Now the Model X8A, what the X8A is, in 1912 Harley Davidson added their eighth model uh, to, uh, to their lineup and uh, the X8A is a single cylinder belt drive magneto ignition with actually a full floating clutch or a full floating rear wheel so uh, this is a really unique machine in that it's got a belt pulley tensioner at the same time that it's actually got a clutch here that actually operates the rear wheel and allows uh, the belt to spin full time while the rear wheel sits uh, standard. Now, as I was saying, they just made about, I think, 550 or 560 of these machines this particular year. They sold for $235. I had to pay a little bit more than that, uh, but quite happy with how the bike uh, ended up panning out. Now, the machine has such a neat story. Uh, the bike was purchased brand new by Mr. Walter Lehman of Frederick, Maryland. Uh, Walter rode the bike for many years, and actually in 1927, uh, Walter got married to his wife, Ma. Uh, Maude decided that this machine was too dangerous to ride to work every day and ride back every day. Uh, so instead of selling the bike, Walter actually dismantled the machine and put it in the attic. So the bike sat apart until about 1976. Uh, and after Walter had passed away, one of his sons got it, uh, and he actually decided he was going to restore the motorcycle. As you can see, the bike's unrestored. Thank goodness that he ended up pumping the brakes. And uh, so he ended up priming the frame and priming the front end, uh, otherwise left the bike sit entirely as it was. Uh, fast forward about another 20 years, uh, and uh, a fella called us up. He had uh, taken possession of the bike maybe about 10 years earlier. Uh, the bike was in pieces when he got it, so he just hung everything loosely back on the motorcycle. Didn't really final assemble anything, uh, but as the bike came to me, gas tanks were on, uh, engine was in, the belt was off, and uh, the machine needed quite a bit of massaging to get back to the shape that it's in today. Now. We got the bike on Thursday afternoon, and you know here at Wheels Through Time, we like to get right at it. Uh, believe it or not, we had this bike running by Friday at about noon. Uh, and now the bike, again, five, uh, four horsepower, excuse me, and come on over this side, Steve, check it out. The engine, uh, single cylinder, uh, obviously, as you can see. Now, this is one of the engines that's pre mechanical intake valve. So this is what we call an atmospheric intake valve. No push rod or rocker arm up here. The only thing opening the valve is suction from the cylinder, uh, suction from the piston, excuse me. So it's really uh, the, the atmospheric intake valve is really kind of what marks uh, the end, uh, or uh, I guess uh, the moving on from the atmospheric intake valve really kind of marked the end of the most primitive era in motorcycling. And by the time you go to the mechanical valve, you can really time things to the degree, open it when you want to, close it when you want to. Uh, shortly after Harley incorporated the mechanical intake valve, they're going 100 miles an hour, maybe less than a year later. So Schebler carburetor, uh, it's got a, 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 a Dixie style open magneto, a Bosch magneto, excuse me, and uh, as you can see there's still a little bit uh, of original paint and uh, remnants of the Harley-Davidson decal there. So, uh, like I said, the bike came to us in non-running condition and my pal Ken Curtis spent about a half a day helping me out. Uh, and right now, what we're gonna do is get this thing cranked up and going. So, uh, we'll add gas to it um, and uh, Hopefully this thing will fire right, right up like, uh, like we want it to. So one of the neat things about Harley-Davidson in 1912 was how many different models they offered. They actually offered a magneto ignition, they offered electric ignition, they offered a single cylinder, they offered a twin cylinder, uh, and then they also offered the, the machines with the clutch, machines without the clutch, uh, and on top of that, uh, a twin cylinder model with a chain drive um, 
uh, which was new for 1912, the chain drive was. So I think we've got enough fuel in this guy and uh, we're gonna go ahead and fire it right off. So uh, what we'll do, take it through the starting procedure real quick. Now anything you see with the chain on this side of the bike guys, uh, is a pedal start motorcycle. You can see the pedals here. So shortly here, we'll climb aboard and fire this thing up. Uh, fuel shut offs up top. So gas cap, this actually has a primer here in case you wanna get to the primer cup. It's for cold weather starting, but fuel shut off here. And so what we'll do is we'll turn this on and that'll supply fuel to the carburetor. Now, as the float's filling up, uh, what we like to do with these early carburetors is actually bring the gas level a little bit higher than the float level will, will allow it. So this is called a tickler here. And what you're doing is you're actually holding the float down and allowing the, the float bowl to uh, accept more fuel uh, than it would under running conditions. That makes for easier starting. Um, so, uh, haven't seen any drips from the carburetor, which is usually how we like to, or is usually how we know this thing's uh, got fuel up to the top. But uh, as you'll notice, guys, the bike is so remarkably original. Uh, original uh, intake valve spring cover, 100 year old spark plug. Uh, original exhaust pipe, you can see it's missing the muffler. This is what we call a skip link chain. Original pedals and sprockets, uh, all the sheet metal. It's just such a remarkable survivor of a motorcycle. Uh, and uh, we're gonna get it running here in real short order. So original seat, if you can take a look at that piece of leather, just imagine a piece of leather still being soft after 100 years, it's pretty remarkable. Likewise, the belt, now these are leather drive belts on these old motorcycles of this era. And for this belt, and you can see it's got some age to it. It's cracking and, and uh, at the same time, uh, it's still remarkably soft. And you can hear that engine spinning over and a little bit of compression. And I think we're, uh, I think we're in good shape to get this thing cranked up and going, Steve. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and climb aboard and Hopefully we've got enough fuel in this guy. Screw the choke out. Now these air metering valves on these uh, Schebler style early HX carburetors, there's actually a tapered leather flap right in here that meters the air. It's spring loaded, so by unscrewing this, I'm actually winding that spring a little tighter and making it more difficult to open the flap. So what you're doing there is making air more difficult. So obviously it raises the or it changes the air-fuel mixture, uh, and then once we've got the machine up and running, uh, we'll take that choke off and you'll hear it really come to life. So uh, throttle here, spark advance on the left grip. The early single cylinders, you actually roll that throttle all the way off, and it raises the exhaust valve. You can just barely see it down there. So when you raise that exhaust valve, you not, you've got no compression. So you can actually spin that thing over, and uh, once you're spinning the motor over, bring it up to speed, drop the compression release, and it ought to fire right up. There we go. She shuts off. See how that rear belt was moving, but that rear wheel was standing still. And the, again, the full float and clutch, Steve, was brand new for 1912. Quite an invention, because what it actually allowed you to do was keep your belt tight all the time and start and stop as needed. So uh, one awesome motorcycle. 
thanks Wade for selling it to me. And uh, proud to have it on display here at Wheels Through Time. One more all original motorcycle in our collection uh, from the earliest days of Harley Davidson. Thanks for checking us out, guys. We'll see you again. <laughs>